Hey guys, welcome back to the fourth video of the SciPy tutorial series. In this video, we'll be learning about the special functions sub package in SciPy. So first we need to import numpy and then we also need to import the sub package. To do that, we need to write import scipy.special as special. So we are going to call scipy.special as special. So this sub package contains a very long list of mathematical functions that are very useful in math and science. And you can check out the entire list of mathematical functions in the SciPy documentation. The main advantage of using functions from scipy.special is that they are optimized and they can run much faster than writing your own Python function. So let's say if you have code that requires a lot of mathematical calculations, it's better to use a special function from this sub package rather than creating your own Python function because you probably know that Python runs uh, very slowly and functions in scipy.special have been uh, optimized. So now let's see how to use this sub package. So in line five, I am basically using the cube root function from the sub package. So here I reference the sub package special dot cbrt, which is cube root. And I give in one argument, which is a numpy array. And what happens is that each element is cube rooted. So essentially we are performing element wise operation on this array and that operation is cube root. So here I am. So in the in line eight, I have the exp 10 function, which is basically computing 10 to the power x. So to do that, we need to write special dot exp 10. And then here, instead of giving a numpy array, I'm putting in a Python list. So yeah, you can put in either a numpy array or a list and the code will still run fine. Over here, we are again performing element, element wise operation where we are computing 10 to the power two and 10 to the power three. So let's run the code. So here you can see that for line five, we have printed out the cube roots for 64, 125 and 729. So we get four, five and nine. And then for the exponential 10 function, we get 10 to the power two, which is 100 and then 10 to the power three, which is 1000. Okay. so these two functions are very commonly used. So it's a good idea that you remember these. So next is combinations. So SciPy gives us a very handy function to calculate combinations. So here we have two arguments, n and k. So n is the number of objects and k is the number of objects being picked. So let's say I have 10 objects and I want to pick three random objects from those 10 objects and combinations. And this function basically gives us the number of combinations that we can get from choosing three items from 10 objects. And by the way, for combinations, the order doesn't matter. And you can see that for this function we get 120. So for permutations, uh, we basically have n and k. So n is again the number of objects and k is the number of objects being picked. And here the order matters. So the order in which those three objects that you have picked does matter, which definitely increases the number of permutations compared to the number of combinations and the number of permutations is 720. So these are combinations and permutation functions in SciPy. All right. So next is the log sum exp. So it computes the log of the sum of exponentials of the input element. 
So the input has to be either a Python list or a NumPy array. So here I'm using a Python list. And what I'm doing here is that first I am, for each element, I am performing an exponential operation. So I'm performing e to the power 1, e to the power 2, e to the power 3, and e to the power 3, e to the power 4. And then I'm adding them up, and then I am applying the natural logarithm on it. And you can see that the value is 4.44. So that's the log sum exp function. Finally is the Lambert W function. So this is a very complex function and in, instead of defining it using Python, it's definitely a much better idea to simply take it from SciPy. So this function is defined as the inverse of x times e to the power x. So uh, to give an example of an inverse function, let's say you have a function e to the power x, the inverse of that is natural logarithm of x or ln x. So here the inverse of x times e to the power x is, there is no particular function for that. It's simply defined as the Lambert W function. And again, wz is such that z is equal to wz times e to the power wz. So this is definite. This is the definition of an inverse function where you can simply put this into x and then you should get the input element over here and z can be a complex number so here i am simply calculating the lambert w function of one and i get a complex number actually the complex part is zero so we can ignore that and you can see that this is the value that we get let's say i change it to two So I get this value, let's change it to 5, and we get this value. So for certain values, we'll definitely get a complex number. And yeah, so when I put negative 5, I do get a complex number here. Uh, so yeah. So there we go. There is a complex number from the Lambert W function. And again, the number of functions available in this sub package is very high. So I can't go through every function. And it's best if you just check the SciPy documentation. So that's it for this video. If you like this video, then please consider giving a like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video.